what I really love is watching those motivational sports movies. The ones where the underdog comes from beneath and wins the whole thing. It could be Rocky Balboa. It could be about hockey or football. There's so many true stories about these incredible comebacks that they really inspire us to keep going. Well, today I'm going to speak to you a message along those lines. And I actually spoke this message on Sunday, a different title. So if you've already been to church and seen this message at Westeros, then hey, stick around. You'll always learn something new the second time. But this message today is called The Comeback. So welcome, Westeros Gospel Church, Lion Heart Ministries. I'm Scott Jansen, and let's get in to this message. Thank you for joining us for this midweek service called The Comeback. I spoke this message on Sunday, and I gave it a different title. It was called It's Not Over Yet. But I'm uh, changing the title for this midweek service called The Comeback. And um, I might throw some new stuff in there that people didn't hear on Sunday. So if you were in church on Sunday, you still might get something out of this. Amen. So um, I, I really felt strongly to speak this message on Sunday and again today because I know that 2020 has been quite a rough year for a lot of people. Isn't that right? I mean, people all over the world have been affected by this 2020. And a lot of people had a lot of expectation going into this year. Especially the Christian community. You know, believing that 2020, this has got to be a, a great year. God's going to do some awesome things. And then we start off the year with a worldwide pandemic called COVID-19. And it's still around. And uh, then we had the incident with George Floyd and the protests and the, and the racism and stuff like that that's been around the world. And, and uh, there's been protesting and some groups have been, you know, violent. And, and it's just been, uh, it's been quite a year, let's just say that. And one thing that we know is that there are a lot of people hurting. A lot of people all over the world that are hurting right now. You know, whether it be from the COVID-19, whether it be from racism, whether it be from uh, some other issue that's going on in their life, they got laid off. Uh, there's a, a ton of businesses that um, don't know if they're going to recover because of everything that's happened. And that's what 2020 has been like uh, so far this year. And there's people all over the world, like I said, that are, that are hurting and they're looking for hope. They're looking for hope somewhere. There's got to be hope. They're afraid. They're upset. They're confused. And today I want to look at the great comeback. And um, I believe that this year is still going to be a great year. And so I want to talk about the God of hope. And I want to encourage you not to give up. And I am encouraged because I, I know that somebody came to our house this week. Um, or actually last week. And uh, it was such a timely thing because uh, a man showed up at my door and we live right, right at the church, um, right across from the church. And the man showed up at the door, knocked on the door and, and, uh, and, and simply said, I have a message from God to give to you. And this man didn't live in the area. He uh, said he was from Red Deer, came up and uh, came to the door and, and said, look, I got a God told me I have to pray for you and give you a message. And the message is that God is going to do something absolutely amazing in your community and in your church. I had no idea who this guy was. And so it was an amazing encouragement of God for this man to show up and give me this word. And he prayed for me and he prayed for the family and, and left. And I just thought this is such a timely thing not to give up. And he was just encouraging me, um, don't give up because something's going to happen. Something's going to happen in your community and in your city and wherever you're watching from right now, God's going to do something in your life. 2020 isn't over yet. Amen. And I want to start, I want to share this example um, 
a story that everyone has heard multiple times, but I was rereading it and thinking there's some really good stuff in there that I want to share. So I want to start with this story in Matthew 14 about Peter walking on the water, something that we've heard a lot of. But let me just share this again. Verse 24 says, Meanwhile, the disciples were in trouble far away from land, for a strong wind had risen, and they were fighting heavy waves. Now, 2020 has been like that, hasn't it? We have had a strong wind, and we've been fighting many waves and heavy waves. And it says, About three o'clock in the morning, Jesus came toward them walking on the water. When the disciples saw him walking on the water, they were terrified. And in fear, they cried out, it's a ghost. But Jesus spoke to them at once, don't be afraid. He said, take courage, I am here. Then Peter called to him, Lord, if it's really you, tell me to come to you, walking on the water. Yes, come, Jesus says. So Peter went over the side of the boat and walked on the water toward Jesus. But when he saw the strong wind and the waves, he was terrified and began to sink. Save me, Lord, he shouted. Jesus immediately reached out and grabbed him. You have so little faith, Jesus said. Why did you doubt me? When they climbed back in the boat, the wind stopped. Then the disciples worshipped him. You really are the Son of God, they exclaimed. Four things that I want, to, I want you to notice in this story. First, the storm came and they were fighting the heavy waves. But even in the storm, who was there? Jesus was there. Jesus was in the middle of the storm. And that's something that we need to remember every day. All around you, things are happening and, and you're asking, where's the peace that I need. Where is God in all of this? Jesus is right there in the middle of the storm. We always need to remember that. He says, I will never leave you and I'll never forsake you. Jesus is right there in the middle of everything that's happening. And second, even with Jesus there, the people were afraid. They were terrified because of the storm. And I think this is a lot like us. Um, he says, don't be afraid, Tur take courage, I am here. And this is something that we need to remind ourselves that we're, we're still human. And we're, when we're in a storm, even though we know Jesus is there, we still have the temptation to give in to fear or doubt or discouragement. The third thing is that Peter questions if it's really Jesus that is there with them in the storm. And I wonder how many times we do that. Where when we're going through something, we say, God, is it are you really here? Are you really in the middle of the storm? Because I feel completely alone. Are you really here? And what's interesting about this third thing here, Peter asks, is it really you? But then Peter does something that we all need to do. He takes a step of faith. He steps out of the boat and he walks on water. It's then that the miracle occurs. It's then that the blessing takes place. When he chose to step out in faith in the middle of the storm and believe, and believe that it was Jesus that was talking to him. And the fourth thing is that the miracle, it didn't happen after Jesus calmed the storm. It happened in the middle of the storm. And I think what people do is they, we think that once Jesus calms the storm, then I'll be able to trust him. Then all the blessings are going to come. Then that's when I'm going to find my breakthrough, when the storm ends. But in this case, the storm was all around Peter. And Jesus was in the middle of it. And Jesus called him out. And Peter had a choice to make. You see, Jesus didn't calm the storm yet. He says, come out here. And then the miracle happened. 
And it was after he walked on water, then he saw the, the wind and he began to sink and doubt. It was after that that Jesus calmed the storm. And so I want you to remember that uh, a calming is going to come. 2020 is not over yet. Amen. There is blessing that is about to take place. And I know that we all love a good comeback story. And uh, I'm one of those people. I love a good comeback story. You know, whether it's a sports story or a true life story of, uh, of a different nature, I love these stories. And I have a, I have a story I want to share with you today. And this is a guy, his name is Rocky Bleer. Okay, this is not Rocky Balboa. This is Rocky Bleer, and I'm not even sure I'm saying his name, last name right. But he used to be a captain of Notre Dame uh, football team. And, uh, and he was actually really good. He was drafted twice. Uh, what I mean by that is he was drafted by the Pittsburgh Steelers, to play in the NFL after college, but he was also drafted by the United States Army. And so he had no choice. He kind of went from captain on the field to private in the jungle, the Vietnam War. And in August 29, 1969, uh, his platoon went to the aid of another platoon that was under ambush. And Blear took a bullet through the leg. And it was pretty bad. I mean, minutes later, after that, a grenade exploded next to him. And so he had uh, sulfur lace shrapnel all over his foot. He was bleeding heavily. He crawled through the rice paddies and eventually made it to a chopper, was thrown into uh, a medical camp where he was able to have some recovery time. And later he was sent to Japan to undergo some surgery and undergo an operation. And the doctor removed over a hundred pieces of shrapnel uh, from his foot. And they told him, I said, you know, if you really persevere, Rocky, you might be able to walk again. That was the hope they gave him. You'll never play football, but you, you might be able to walk. That's the good news, they told him. Well, Rocky was uh, determined that it was going to be more than that. And... Uh, and in the end, I'll take you to the end of the story. Not only did Rocky walk again, he won the Super Bowl four times. Imagine that. He made it back into the NFL, won four Super Bowls, and that was to go along with the Purple Heart that they awarded him in the war. Now, when I hear that story, I'm wondering how come that story hasn't been, hasn't been portrayed in the movie yet. I mean, that is amazing. Maybe it has. Maybe I don't even know about it. But I know it's not the Rocky movie I know. But this Rocky, that is a real amazing comeback story. And I think about even like the early church and the persecution they suffered. And, and we can't even imagine what they went through. But, you know, here's what Apostle Paul says in the midst of that. In Romans 12, 12. Rejoice in our confident hope. Be patient in trouble and keep on praying. That was his hope. Philippians 4, 2 to 4, he says, Dear brothers and sisters, when troubles of any kind come your way, consider it an opportunity for great joy. For you know that when your faith is tested, your endurance has a chance to grow. So let it grow. For when your endurance is fully developed, you will be perfect and complete, needing nothing. That's pretty amazing that Paul is able to say this, a man that went through a lot of persecution. But the question is why? Why do we keep standing strong? Why do we keep enduring? Why do we want to become, uh, become part of the comeback story? Especially when it seems hopeless. Why do we pray when it seems like it's not doing any good? Well, I think one of the people that answered it really well was King David. I mean, this is a man who, who had a great comeback story of his own. He knew the heartache of being on top one moment, and the next moment, he's running for his life. In one moment, he's sinning against God with Bathsheba, and the next moment, he is being confronted by the prophet, Nathan. Right? 
And then he goes through repentance. And God says, you're a man after my own heart. That's pretty amazing. But look what David said in Psalm 30, verse 5. For his anger lasts only a moment, but his favor lasts a lifetime. Weeping may last through the night, but joy comes with the morning. Amen? It's not over yet. It's not over yet. The comeback is still happening. Weeping may last through the night, but joy comes in the morning. 2020 may not be, uh, may, might not be off to a great start, but when we look to Jesus in the middle of the storm, I think that uh, he's going to make us walk on water and he's going to calm the storm. And I believe that 2020 is still going to be the greatest year the church has experienced. Amen. I want to also look at a a man in scripture that uh, had quite an amazing opportunity for, uh, for faith and for a comeback. And that was Abraham. And I want to read what it says in Romans 4, 18 to 22. And it says, even when there was no reason for hope, Abraham kept hoping, believing that he would become the father of many nations. For God had said to him, that's how many descendants he will have. And Abraham's faith did not weaken, even though at about a hundred years of age, he figured his body was as good as dead, And so is Sarah's womb. Abraham never wavered in believing God's promise. In fact, his faith grew stronger. And in this, he brought glory to God. He was fully convinced that God is able to do whatever he promises. And because of Abraham's faith, God counted him as righteous. And I want you to notice uh, the opening verse there. It says... Even when there was no reason for hope, Abraham kept hoping. I mean, Abraham knew very well he was a hundred years old and that it was impossible naturally to have children. Abraham wasn't arguing the facts. His faith wasn't in the natural. His faith was not in himself. His faith was in the promise of God. His faith was in the knowing of who God is personally. His faith was came from a personal experience with God. And I'll show you that. In fact, in Genesis 17, 1 to 6, this is how God introduces himself. He says, when Abram was 99 years old, so this is just a year before, the Lord appeared to him and said, I am El Shaddai, God Almighty. Serve me faithfully and live a blameless life. And I will make a covenant with you by which I will guarantee to give you countless descendants. At this, Abram fell face down on the ground. Then God said to him, This is my covenant with you. I will make you the father of a multitude of nations. What's more, I am changing your name. It will no longer be Abram. Instead, you will be called Abraham, for you will be the father of many nations. And I will make you extremely fruitful. Your descendants will become many nations and kings will be among them. And so as you can see in this story, God appears before Abram and introduces himself as El Shaddai, God Almighty. And this is a powerful meaning because El Shaddai also can be translated as the overpowerer, meaning God will do what he purposes to do, overpowering all opposition. Another term that they interpret as Shaddai is the all-sufficient one. So either either interpretation is good because um, he is almighty, almighty God. In other words, almighty is the God who is enough. He's always enough. He's more than enough. He is more than sufficient to meet any need. He is almighty, all almighty, and all sufficient. Amen? And so he is power and provision. In great compassion, he sustains, he nourishes, he protects me, he takes my weakness and gives me strength. He takes my inadequacy and uses his sufficiency. And... um, 
This explains, going back to Romans 4, why it said Abraham never wavered in believing God's promise. In fact, it says his faith grew even stronger. How? Because he knew the person who was promising it. It was El Shaddai. It was God Almighty. So the question becomes for you, when faced with impossible situations, when faced with the year like 2020, what is your response going to be? Who will you trust? What words are going to come out of your mouth? Uh, is 2020 a write-off? Or is 2020 still in the hands of God? Because I believe that God is able to do whatever he wants to do. He's the all-sufficient one. He's the almighty. I mean, you think about people in scripture who went through this. People who encountered Jesus, who didn't give up. The faith of the centurion, the woman of blood. Blind Bartimaeus, the New Testament church. There's so many people that said, I'm not taking no for an answer. I'm not giving up. And, I, and that's my prayer for you today is that you wouldn't write off this year, but that you would see that we serve an, a mighty God and that there is a comeback story in the making. This year is still going to be a great year. No matter what's going on in your life, you can believe in El Shaddai. Amen. Let me pray for you. Father, I thank you for everyone watching, for every person that may have been going through a lot of difficulties this year. I just thank you, God, that you are El Shaddai. You are God Almighty. You are the all-sufficient one. And you were able to turn our worst situation, our worst year, into a great blessing. And we thank you, Lord, that we can look to you for the strength that we need. And I pray right now that you would strengthen everyone that is watching this program. And for those that have never trusted in you, that they would put their faith and trust in you, Jesus, today. And we give you the thanks and the praise in Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen. God bless you. We'll see you next week.